Welcome everybody to the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty, where again today, we are cheering on Justin Colbert and the Texas A&M Aggies in the final game of Justin Colbert's college career. Colbert's played a big role in this series, helping us win a national championship, and we're still invested in his story as he now plays at Texas A&M. Ignore the fact that he's a junior here. Obviously, I had to edit him in here so the past stats aren't correct either. But the 2021 numbers are 22 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, and we watched him put together a spectacular performance in the victory over Stanford where they crushed the Cardinal and scored a big victory. We've now seen two games of Texas A&M this year. This is going to be the third. They have a high-flying passing attack with Justin Colbert along with receivers Cliff McKeon and Scott Lopez. This is a fun team to watch. It was really enjoyable to watch them beat the Cardinal. And today they take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the team that nearly defeated Penn State in the Big Ten Championship. And that game would have changed the national championship picture. We are obviously going to be in that game and we're facing Penn State. That would not be the case though if Nebraska had hung on to beat the Nittany Lions. So we know they can go toe to toe with the number one team. I think that puts Texas A&M here as big underdogs with a seven and five record. Nebraska meanwhile, nine and four, number 18 in the country. So it's another big test for Justin Colbert here on a New Year's Day Bowl game. It's time to get into Nebraska and Texas A&M in the Outback Bowl. Texas A&M has one of the top passing offenses in all of college football. Justin Colbert has made this team the number two passing attack and the number four scoring offense. So points should not be an issue here for the Aggies as they take on the Cornhuskers, who are more about running the football. Two teams, two different identities. Who's going to take home the Outback Bull Trophy? And here we go. Texas A&M will start with the football. It says I'm controlling Mitchell. I'm actually not controlling anything right now. And Texas A&M will start just outside the 25. I had to control them to start the game. Otherwise, they bust out the Air Force playbook, and that would be no good. Good to go now, though, as Justin Colbert takes the field one more time. Colbert starts in the air on first down and delivers a strike on the outside to Michael Dorsey. at seven. I was so happy to see that many of you did want to see this game. I, I love this and just adding a little extra to the series. It doesn't have to be there, but... I mean, when we watched Colbert take down Stanford, it was like, wow, now I can't imagine not doing this. And we know that Colbert can run a little bit. Now, I've talked about Colbert as being a pocket passer in the past. That's true. He has, like, I want to say around 70 speed, though. So it's not like his speed is not usable in any capacity. This game is played in Tampa, home of the Buccaneers. And the ship is even in the end zone. I'm not sure if they fire off the cannon, though, for a touchdown in a game like this. I'd sure hope so. As Colbert gets this one away, the pressure was coming in hot. So to get Colbert to turn pro, he's a junior on Texas A&M, and I can't edit his year. So I might have to get creative in what I do. Colbert sets up the screen on third down, and the Huskers are going to get the stop. But I might have to go and create him on another team and take a senior quarterback just to get him to turn pro. It's a weird process, but it's basically the only way, unless you have another suggestion down below in the comments. For Nebraska, their quarterback is Chris Powers. The next to his name, there was the All-American emblem, but he's not an All-American this year, so I'm guessing it was in the past. And he gives this one off up the middle, running free, Danny Bradley for 19. Bradley had over 1,200 rushing yards on the season. So I'm expecting to see one team that throws it 40 times and one team that runs it 40 times. That's what I'm hoping anyway. We know Stanford wanted to run in that first meeting when we saw them play against Texas A&M, and their run defense was up to the challenge. First down now for Powers. Short, one yard. Here's Powers on third and nine. They'll also go to a screen pass. Up the sideline, that is Bradley coming up short. We'll see if the rain has any impact today, but so far, no score. 
And it's going to be Colbert keeping on first and 10. He breaks a tackle. The power from Justin Colbert. Gain of six. Uh-oh. Get back up. For those wondering about the National Championship episode of the Dynasty, that's going to be early this coming week, either Monday or Tuesday. I'm hoping to get it up on Monday as Colbert's nearly picked, and that could have been disastrous. It's Colbert on third down. Trying to find a way to convert. He gets it away deep and he's almost picked again. John Robinson with the Butterfingers. And Colbert's only two of five. Here's a first down screen pass to start for Nebraska. And a tackle made on Vince Cox after a gain of four. Getting to see some of the bowl game results down below as well. That's kind of nice. Cal won their game big. Now Powers keeping and good disciplined option defense. I thought defense didn't exist here in the Big 12. On third and six, knocked down. This is a rough start for two offenses I thought would light up the scoreboard a bit more. Well, Colbert, let's try this again. Keeping on first down. This is the most successful thing they've done today. We know the Aggies are best when Colbert launches the deep ball, so let's get some of that. Give me four verts, please. Let's see if they heard me. First and 10, they're gonna motion out Perry, who stays in the block then awkwardly, and that's thrown away. On second down, Colbert got this off. He's going deep and got him. I told you it would work. 57 yards, the Cliff McKeon. This is maybe the best deep ball passing attack in college football. Colbert gets him down to the one. I thought McKeon may have scored, but no. Five wide down here inside the five. This is Big 12 football. Colbert nearly picked in the end zone. Come on now. Third and goal, last chance. Colbert, touchdown, Michael Dorsey. Aggie strike first, and it was the deep ball that got him down here. Also disappointed, this is the end zone with the ship. They did not fire off the cannon. All right, Nebraska, what's your response? It's a false start and a loss of four for Danny Bradley. Aggie's taking control. By the way, Stanford, after they lost their first game and then lost to Texas A&M, that became a four-game losing streak, and then they lost their bowl game. They lost to New Mexico and the Heisman-winning running back, Michael Lewis. You'll see it down below, I'm sure, soon. Texas over Oregon, by the way. That was kind of the second-best bowl game it looked like, and Oregon drops that. So they lost their two biggest games of the year against us and against Texas. Third and 19, almost sacked at the one. And they're gonna get some good yardage here and almost the first down. Oh, diamond pistol. That's for me, isn't it, Justin? It's a gain of seven here for Jeremiah Perry. Well, that's the signature formation from the Minnesota dynasty. Really love the offense I built there. And they're going to stay with it here as they go with some tempo. Colbert hands again, running left now. A good job staying behind his blocker. It's Jeremiah Perry for six yards. Colbert gets it out quick, and this time he is intercepted. Eventually, the Huskers had to catch one of these. And that's a big mistake that was waiting to happen, I felt. So excellent field position now for the Huskers, who haven't done much offensively. I'm not sure they have a first down yet. I do know they have more false starts than first downs, so that has to change. Here's a give, and the run defense is still stout. No third down conversions yet for the Huskers. Here's Powers, and there's the pressure! Down he goes! Sacked by Jared Walker! This defense has been really good when we've watched them. They gave us a tough fight in week one to start the game, and then against Stanford, obviously, kept them out of the end zone. And more great defense today. Second down for Colbert. Got to beat the Blitz, and he will. First down, Scott Lopez. 
Here's a third and seven for Texas A&M. They have Nebraska in a sub package, spreading out with four receivers. Colbert facing a three-man rush. He'll just check it down, and that gets broken up. So Nebraska, 34 yards of offense so far. That's not going to cut it. They'll get two more with Powers. He'll throw it again, busting out the screen. They have some blockers in front, and this will be a big gain for Bradley. That's what they needed, 23 yards. You see a lot of screens, especially when the other stuff they try doesn't work. It's just their fallback plan. A good run here, and Bradley picks up eight. Across the 50 now, they'll run it weak side, and that's not going to work out too well for Nebraska. They'll have to get it done here in the air. Chris Powers on the outside. An accurate throw to Dan Walton. Outside of Texas A&M's deep ball, it doesn't seem like anybody's doing anything particularly well. Third and eight now for the Huskers. Here's Powers. They give him some time, but it's not enough. And I guess nobody got open. He sacked again. Can we get some more of that deep ball then? That's fun to watch. We'll start though, Jeremiah Perry getting 11. Here's Colbert back to the air now. Aggies have it again and on the move. He almost got his man. That looked good from this angle. Could be a much lower scoring game than I think anybody would have anticipated. Barely any third down conversions. Colbert needs six. Sales one outside and that was almost picked again. This is a really sloppy game today. It's going to be Husker football again, trying to start on the ground. A stiff arm delivered by Bradley. He gets eight. And there's that score down below. New Mexico beats Stanford by three. And there's Powers with a good throw, complete for 12. They hand this one off inside, and there's just no flow to this offense. Their good plays are just sprinkled in between stuff like this. I think each team has one third down conversion, and we've seen a lot of possessions already. They just keep punting the football back and forth. Screen pass on third down. Bradley needs a block, or he'll just create his own, and he's a yard shy. You got to consider going for it here, right? Well, their idea of going for it is going for the field goal. This is a long attempt now, about 54 yards, and it will not have enough. It is short. Texas A&M football, and there's a good tackle broken by Jeremiah Perry. He grinds out nine yards. Let's get a conversion going here. Colbert, everybody wanted to see what you could do today. It's time to put on a show. Give the people what they want to see. Third and one. It's Colbert keeping. Is this what you wanted? Colbert running for the first down. Got to change the play yet again. First down. Colbert to the air. A little lob, and that's complete for about seven. Eight of 18 throwing for Justin Colbert, and I'd say four or five of those passes were interceptable. Second down now in the split backfield. It's a fake and a throw over the middle. They got their hands on that, too. I'm telling you, just deep ball. Deep ball, Justin. Third and three. Short ball. Complete first down. Let me call the plays. Just let me call a couple, please. I can help you. First down here for Texas A&M, and this is going up the middle. They're starting to get that ground game going a bit more, it seems. Texas A&M facing another third and ten. There's just no consistency to either offense. Colbert to the middle. That's going to be caught. And they'll have to attempt a field goal. Two minutes to go in the first half. Nebraska trying to get anything going. And it doesn't seem like it's going to happen with the ground game. A third down and seven. Texas A&M trying to get the ball back. And that's complete. First down, Nebraska. They have something here. 17 yards to Justin Thomas, their top receiver. 
On first down, this is sailed and nearly, no one is intercepted, turning it back. The Yankees are going up by three scores to end the half. A pick six by Jones. The first big mistake by Powers. I thought he was having a pretty good day so far. The numbers sure look good, but you can't have that happen. Oh, whoa, they're returning this up the sideline here. A very good return by Isaiah Gaines. Maybe they can get those points back then. On first down, here's Powers. He gets it outside and a good tackle. Nebraska down to one timeout. Light a fire skill activated. I have no idea what that means, but maybe it's good. Nebraska needs something here. They've been waiting all day. Powers, it's caught! First and goal, Justin Thomas. They needed that one. Getting into the end zone now. Here's first and goal. Powers, fires, touchdown, Dan Walton. Well, the pick six was terrible, but that is a huge response by Nebraska. If it's a two-score game, it's never too far out of reach. And this should be the score, I think, going into halftime. A screen pass here for the Aggies. Maybe they can do something before halftime. Who knows? 17 seconds left for Texas A&M. Colbert to the middle. That'll stop the clock. Still work to do, the deep ball intercepted. Huskers deny Colbert. Now we should be headed into the half. Let's get on to the second half now. A 17 to seven game, Nebraska trying to get some offense going and they found it just before the end of the half. So now in the second half, can they make a game out of this? When it was 17 nothing, I thought, okay, Aggies might be running away with this game, but now I'm not so sure. Nebraska down 10, running again, getting to the outside. Bradley to the 45. And now they're going to run triple option. It's well done, and they have another first down. Gaines gets 13. Second down and 11 now for the Huskers. Again, they'll keep it on the ground, and Bradley delivers a stiff arm and is taken down near the 40. Third and eight now for Powers. Has to throw for it. He's pressured and can't escape. He is sacked. Without any big plays, it requires consistency on a level they have not showed yet. Their one touchdown came after that big throw to Justin Thomas. Texas A&M takes over again. They'll try a run. Perry delivers a stiff arm. He'll throw another one and gets the Aggies a first down. Second down now for Texas A&M. Another run. They're committing to it a lot more than they did against Stanford. That's for sure. That's 11 for 55 now for Jeremiah Perry. Third and short. Colbert gives to Perry. That's another first down. Aggies now near midfield. Now it's going to be Colbert running with it. He's got another first down. Texas A&M getting it done on the ground. They're going to run this one again. Another first down and a big gain picked up by George Phillips. They're not even trying to throw it on this possession. Just running with authority. They have a chance to go back up by three scores if they can execute here in the red zone. It's an offset pistol. Colbert keeping. Oh, that wasn't a good idea. Third down and 11. Nebraska needs a stop right here. Colbert fires to the middle, and he's got the touchdown to Julian Jackson. And the Aggies increase their lead 23 7. Well, if Nebraska's going to make a game out of this, it's going to take a lot more than they've shown so far. Texas A&M dominant against Stanford, and this defense has been dominant again today. Now, I would say that Nebraska was the heavy favorites in this game. Kirk Herbstreit, he always picks the game in here. I, I love that feature in this game, but uh, he picked Texas A&M. 
So, he saw something here that I didn't. I didn't think their defense would be so good again. And they just keep getting powers on the ground. Third and 22. Of course, they just break out a screen pass. And they're not going to get very close. It looks like the Aggies could be running away with the rest of this game. One more touchdown, and I think that would put this game away. Justin Colbert on a quarterback draw. You got to be kidding me, running down the middle like that. 16 yards. It's been really fun to follow Colbert here, now leaving Kalispell, and to watch a couple of his games where we're not even involved. I love that so many of you want to see this. I know I do. I, I really enjoy all these secondary details. Oh, whoa! Colbert got destroyed. But I'm disappointed we've only seen one real deep ball out of Colbert. But I guess they haven't needed it today. Maybe there's still some to come. Again, they motion out the back. Second down for Colbert. Wants the end zone. And it's off the hands of his receiver. Incomplete. Third down for Texas A&M. They'll head to their own screen pass. And they're not going to get outside with it. So a field goal attempt upcoming again. What a performance, though, by this defense. Under 200 yards allowed to this point. Five sacks, a pick six. And Nebraska is probably not going to get back in this game. Third down and seven for Nebraska. Running again. Powers has some room, and he will pick up the first down. Nebraska needs something, and they need it fast. Maybe last play of the quarter right here. They're still committed to running, but it hasn't gotten them far today. On to the fourth quarter now. Third down and five for Nebraska in desperation mode. It's powers complete. Not done yet. Powers on second down, nearly picked off, trying to throw across the middle. Big third down again, Powers can't escape the pocket, they sack him one more time. I want to say that's six on the day. They have no choice but to go for it and probably stretch the field. They need ten. Powers? Has some time, throws it short, and he's intercepted again. This is going to go back for another Aggie pick six. I think this game is just about over. Touchdown, Texas A&M. I decided to sim ahead with the commanding lead Texas A&M had, and I just wanted to call one more play with Justin Colbert. He takes the knee. And that is the end of Justin Colbert's college career. He goes out a champion, though. He won the national championship with us, played out one more year at Texas A&M, and had a lot of success, and they win another bowl game to finish it off. It was very fun to watch Justin Colbert play again. The Stanford game, though, was a whole lot better. I thought it was more fun to watch, but still fun to see what Colbert and this team can do. And I'm hoping to get Justin Colbert then created on another team where they have a senior quarterback and that way he can actually go and be drafted and it'll make sense. It's just if I kept him here on Texas A&M, then he'd have another year of eligibility when he's not supposed to. So that is just about going to do it. We'll check on the numbers. Kevin Carey, player of the game with his sack, forced fumble, fumble recovery, three tackles for a loss. And there's Justin Colbert celebrating another big victory. Even if it's not with us, we're all still happy for him. Colbert's final game is a pretty decent one, but he had a lot of mistakes as well. 230 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions, but he also ran really well for 62 yards. So maybe we could have ran Justin Colbert a bit more at Kalispell. Really fun way, though, to watch him end his college career. I really enjoyed following the Texas A&M season. And that was a great, I think, chapter in this Kalispell story. But next time in the Kalispell dynasty, the Warhawks take the field in the national championship. Again, they meet Penn State. Same team they beat in the Rose Bowl, and it'll be in the same stadium. Kalispell and Penn State. Who's going to emerge victorious in the biggest game of this series yet? 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this extra episode in the Kalispell Dynasty. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave your feedback in the comments. And I'll see you all in the National Championship very soon. Have a great day.